Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about uh, IR spectroscopy. Previously I have made 3 or 4 videos, I can't remember exactly about IR spectroscopy, where I have discussed the useful uh, regions of different functional groups, instrumentation of IR spectroscopy and symbol preparation of IR spectroscopy and introduction of IR spectroscopy. So in this video I'll be uh, giving you a practical guideline how to approach the uh, analysis of a spectrum or what you can tell at a glance when you look at the spectrum how you can interpret it and how you can get the results out of that spectrum so when analyzing the spectrum of an unknown compound your first efforts on determining the presence or absence this is really important that something is present or something is absent. You have to work out this concept of a few major functional groups. The major functional groups are carbonyl, OH, NH, C single bond O, C double bond C, C triple bond C, C triple bond nitrogen. Nitro peaks are most conspicuous, conspicuous, give immediate structural information if they are present. Do not try to make a detailed analysis of the CH absorptions near 3000 per centimeter. Almost all compounds have these absorptions. Okay, so look for the major uh, carbonyl or uh, major compound peaks, not all the peaks, only major peaks. Okay, so look for the major peaks in the IR spectrum and try to identify the major peaks only not all peaks and particularly do not confuse yourselves with the peaks that are, are related to CH region. Focus on the peaks of carbonyl, hydroxyl group, amine group, ether group, alkene, alkyne, nitrile and nitro peaks. The carbonyl group is a big class of functional groups which contains aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, amides, and hydrides, acid chloride. So, seven major groups fall into the category of carbonyl groups. Now, number one point. Is a carbonyl group present? Whenever you look at the IR spectrum, the number one question that you should be asking from yourself is that, is there any carbonyl group present? That's the number one question you should be asking. When I say carbonyl group, then you must have in mind that carbonyl group containing functional groups is there any aldehyde is there any ketone is there any ester is there any carboxylic acid is there any acid chloride is there any anhydride questions like this they all come under the category of one question is a carbonyl group present in the IR spectrum that's the question number one that you should be asking a most important one so that is a rule number one you would say so rule number one that whenever you look at the IR spectrum you should be looking at the presence of carbon group okay the carbon group gives rise to a strong absorption peak that is a second hint that how you can identify the presence of a carbonyl group in the IR that the peak would be strong, the peak would be intense in the region where it will be. The peak will be in this region from 1660 to 1820. So strong peak, the region is 1820 to 1660. So look for the carbonyl group in any given IR spectrum look into this region that is from 1820 to 1660 look for the intense peak look for the region from 1820 to 1660 the peak is often the strongest in the spectrum and of the medium width you can't miss it okay it's easy to identify Okay, if you have understood the rule number one, 
are the guideline number one to approach or interpret or assign the IR spectra. Then let's move on to the rule number two. So rule number two is if carbonyl group is present, check the following types. If it is absent, go to step three. In the step one, if you find that there is no carbonyl group, then go to step three directly. Skip the step two. But if your answer is that carbonyl group is present, then look for the step two. Then look for the acids. Is the carbonyl group belongs to the carboxylic acid? How would you know that? Then look for the OH group. Is OH group present? How you will identify that whether OH group is present or not? Then look for the peak broad absorption near 3400 to 2400 per centimeter usually overlaps CH peak. If you find out, if your answer is that carbonyl group is present, now you can identify which type of carbonyl group it is. Is it acid? Is it amide? Is it ester? Is it anhydride? Is it aldehyde? Is it ketone? which kind of carbonyl group is present now we are digging in detail we are digging in depth to figure it out what kind of carbonyl group that you have identified in the ir spectrum it is now if there was a carbonyl group that belonged to carbon carboxylic acid then it should have oh group because that's how carboxylic acids are c double o h look for the additional OH peak in the IR spectrum that corresponds to the uh, carboxylic acid. If you find out that there is a OH peak as well as this peak, then that must be due to the carboxylic acid. Then next, if, if you want to find out that carbonyl group is due to the amide, then find out that is NH also present because amides contains carbonyl group plus NH NH2 or NH depending upon what kind of amide it is so the NHP can be identified as medium absorption near 3400 per centimeter sometimes a double peak with equivalent half okay now if you want to look at more detail that this carbonyl group is due to the ester then look for the CO present is there a CO group carbon single bond oxygen group present in your molecule or not look that functional group a strong intensity absorptions near 1300 to 1000 per centimeter if you see a peak at around this region from 1300 to 1000 per centimeter that would be due to the carbon single bond oxygen and that is due to the esters so the carbonyl group identification we are looking at and we are finding out which carbonyl group belongs to which functional group as you can as you know already that acids amides esters anhydrides aldehydes and ketones all of these functional groups contain carbonyl group that is carbon double bond oxygen but there is a slight change in their carbonyl group there is an additional part attached to each functional group for example if there is a carbonyl group and if there is OH peak also present then we would say that it is carboxylic acid or if we say there is a carbonyl peak and there is also NH peak then we would say that is due to amide or if we say there is a carbonyl group and there is a C single bond O group peak that is also due to the esters. Now let's, let's find out how we can identify anhydrides. It's relatively easier to find out because anhydrides contains two carbonyl groups. One is symmetric, one is asymmetric. So in my previous videos I have also described modes of vibration, symmetric, asymmetric, twisting, bending, stretching. So if you haven't watched that video please watch that one out so that is uh, about the modes of vibration or vibrational spectroscopy now anhydrides contains two different carbonyl groups and they appear as it and they give rise to two ir absorption peaks for carbonyl groups for two carbonyl groups 
one at eighteen hundred ten and one at seventeen sixty and they are quite easy to identify recognize next is aldehyde in aldehydes you look for the ch peak that because aldehydes contains carbonyl group and one side it is r and other side it is h so if there is a spectrum which corresponds to aldehyde that will not contain nh that will not contain oh so you look for the ch peak two weak absorptions near 2850 to 2750 on right side of the aliphatic ch absorptions you will find these peaks that will correspond to aldehydes okay how you can uh, pick ketones the preceding five choices have been eliminated so if you can't find acids if you can't find amides if you can't find esters if you can't find n anhydrides if you can't find ketones and if you think is still there the co peak that is due to the ketones okay this is how you will approach the carbonyl groups in the ir spectrum and these are the most important functional groups that you should be able to recognize interpret and assign peaks to these functional functionalities by following this strategy okay rule number three if carbonyl group is absent then skip the rule number two from step rule one if you find is carbonyl group present then go to step two if you find if is carbonyl group present no then go to rule three then if there is no carbonyl group then it could be alcohol phenols amines and ethers now how can you identify these there is a issue between alcohols and phenols because they both contain oh group alcohols and phenols they are oh group containing functional groups okay check for oh broad absorption near 3400 to 3300 for both Confirm this by finding CO near 1300 to 1000. How you can pick amines? Check for NH. Medium absorptions near 3400. How you can pick ethers? Check for CO near 1300 to 1000. And the absence of OH near this. So CO is also present in alcohols and phenols and ethers. But in ethers, we do not have OH group. That's why we can easily pick ethers and differentiate alcohols and phenols from ethers. Rule number four, double bonds are aromatic rings. Carbon double bond carbon is a weak absorption near 1650 per centimeter. Medium to strong absorption in the region, 1600 to 1450 is often imply aromatic ring so if you see medium to strong absorption peaks from 1600 to 1450 that may be due to the aromatic rings confirm the double bond or aromatic ring by consulting the ch region because aromatic and vinylic ch occur to the left of 1300 per centimeter aliphatic ch occurs to the right of this value okay that's how you can identify alkenes as well as aromatics Next, you can identify these triple bonds. There, the triple bond carbon, triple bond nitrogen is a medium sharp absorption near 20 to 50 per centimeter. Carbon, triple bond carbon is a weak sharp absorption near 20 to 50. And check also for acetylenic CH near 3300. Nitro groups two strong absorptions at 1600 to 1530 per centimeter and 1390 to 1300 per centimeter that is due to the nitro group hydrocarbons none of these proceedings is found major absorptions are in ch region near if you can't find double bond if you can't find triple bond if you cannot find any carbonyl group if you cannot find any benzene ring if you cannot find nitro group then it must be due to the hydrocarbon okay now 
Very simple spectrum, the only other absorptions appear near 1460 and 1375. The beginning student should resist the idea of trying to assign or interpret every peak, okay? In the spectrum, you simply will not be able to do it. Concentrate first on learning these major peaks and recognize uh, their presence or absence. This is best done by carefully studying the illustrated spectra in the section that follow. Now in the next video, what I will do, I will be discussing each single functional groups and their characteristic IR regions, their peak shapes and their spectral tables from the Pavia book and we will be doing 1, 2, 3, 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 examples of every functional group so, th so that you can get familiar with all of these organic functional groups and recognize them by looking at the IR spectra but before going to the next lecture I would strongly recommend you guys to understand these rules rule number one two and three four five six seven these are the seven rules that will help you to understand the IR spectra in a clear and better and quicker way if you have any questions regarding this please put your questions below in this co in the comment section I will try to answer your questions once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.